Then I went back and studied uh, John Alexander Dowie because John Lake learned healing from John Alexander Dowie. What well, Dowie started tremendous, didn't finish good. That's the sad part. Um, but and a lot of times people look at how a person finishes and if they didn't finish well, it disqualifies everything else. Yeah. But look what the man did. The man yeah. with no mass means of communication, he established churches on every continent. Right. Uh, he would he would look at a con he had congregations of up to twenty thousand people, when when most churches were twenty people, and he said, <laughs> I'll never forget because he stood in the pulpit one time and the, all the all his sermons are recorded word for word in his Leaves of Healing, which I actually have sets of, and he said, we need someone, we we need three hundred people to go to Australia to establish a church, he said I need three hundred people, he said I need to see three hundred hands raise your hand if you'll go to Australia. <laughs> And he said, okay, I see about 150. All right, so uh, you 50, first right there, you go. And he would just draft people and tell them, you're going. And if they said no, he said, don't come back here to church. And so he would send people to other <laughs> continents to establish churches. And, but he literally brought healing back into the church today, the way, wow. kind of the way wow. that John Lake did it. But every generation, and this is the main thing that I really want to, I guess, to get to. Every generation of minister that ministers healing every generation built on the previous generation yes. and when they built it got wider and with John Alexander Dowie he would ask you is there any sin in your life if you said yes he'd say get rid of the sin then come back I won't pray for you until Correct. the sin's gone wow. and he had tremendous results then John Lake was was with him as was F.F. F. Bosworth they were both under John Alexander Dowie and when Lake went to Africa he was, it was all fresh there and he got to try things because there was no board over him telling him what he couldn't do. So he went there and he said, uh, you know, we found out that God will even heal the heathen that have sin in their life and then tell them go and sin no more right. like Jesus did. And so when he came back, he had dealt with what he called heathen. And when he came back, then he established a church and we established church there too, of course, the AFM. But he was telling them, uh, here's what I learned by working with the, with the people out in the field, not in a church setting. F.F. Bosworth stayed in the States, started a church in Dallas, as a matter of fact, and he worked with church people. So his healing came from Dowie also, but it was different because of who he dealt with. Then later, Lake came back to America, dealt with church people, and Bosworth went to Africa with William Branham and kind of saw a different way of ministering also. So you see how all of this goes. Well, John Lake grew to where he didn't ask people first, is there any sin in your life? Why? Because he realized God was bigger. He right. would heal people with sin and then they would get saved. Right. So every generation should build and it should get easier and bigger. And we see God is bigger and better. And, and we understand his love for us. And now, like I said, because of one letter that John Lake wrote from South Africa, 1910 that was my you know turn here <laughs> right. and and I started commanding instead of praying yes yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. and and just read through that letter and the things he said in it and because of that we started ministering different and instantly because at the time when I started I was getting about 25 percent success rate which apparently I found out later was still pretty high, okay? Most of the churches then were getting between 10 and 12%. It was at 25%. Then as soon as I made just a few changes, it shot up over 75%. And then over the next roughly nine months, we got to 100%. Every person that came to our home, because I was not preaching publicly. I was, I was going out, finding people at Walmart, talking to them, ministering to them. People would come to my house because they heard we prayed and they got healed and people were showing up at my house. I had one man that made his living playing pool, which means he was a gambler, and he played in bars, and he found some people in a bar that were sick, and he said, come with me. And he brought them to my house at 1.30 in the morning, and we ministered to him, and God healed him, and then they went back, and he finished making his living, I guess. But that's what he did, because he had gotten healed of mercury poisoning, and he knew God's power is real. So. We, we've just been expanding and looking and saying, okay, what about this? What about that? And realizing, and then it came to realization. Because of that, 
uh, yes, we, of course we pray in the name of Jesus. Yeah. At the same time, we're there in his stead, in his name. So the Bible says everything we do, do it in the name of Jesus. Correct. Well, we don't get up in the morning and go, here's my toothbrush. In the I'm name of Jesus. Brush my right. teeth in the name of Jesus. Right. We, we understand what we do, we do in his name, in his stead. And that's what we've been trying to get across to Christians. Look, good. you don't have to call him down. Yeah. You don't have to call him up. Yeah. It's right there in your mouth. Speak out healing. And we go through the four kinds of people and the four ways that people can get healed. Anybody in the world can get healed this way. And God made it for everybody. Wow.